colleagues to vote against it. Gentlelady yields back. Gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Ivey, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, to my colleague from Wyoming, I, I say I'm not um, questioning your sincerity. This, you know, we just may disagree on some things here. I, I did want to comment on a few things, though. I, you know, the video uh, that you showed, I, I don't know field hockey, but I do know basketball. And um, you showed a video of, a, I, I guess, a, someone getting hurt um, in the competition uh, on a rebound. I, I do want to point out to the gentlelady and to my, my colleagues that um, in women's basketball, uh, especially at the collegiate level, and the University of Maryland is in my district, by the way, uh, you know, go Terps, go Terps Final Four uh, on multiple occasions, national champions. They use men in practice all the time. I mean, it's a fairly routine practice uh, for that to happen. And I think there are high school girls teams that do that too. Uh, one school that's also in my district, Bishop McNamara, a perennial top 10 in the nation, girls basketball teams. Um, in fact, they have uh, kids from that team that have gone that are playing in the WNBA, just like the University of Maryland does too. So I don't think it's automatically dangerous that there's some sort of competition. I take your point that you're, you're trying to protect women, but I gotta say this, um, the women athletes in my, in my district at least aren't asking for your protection. In fact, I, I think generally speaking, they kind of resent it because they wanna compete. If you look at someone like Caitlin Clark, it's a little ironic we're doing this debate on the eve of the, uh, the start of the women's uh, national tournament at the NCAA level. Um, they always recoil when, when they're sort of segregated off with respect to comparison. She didn't want to say that she's uh, only the highest scorer in the history of women's basketball. Will the gentleman yield? Uh, not at this point, but I, I'll come back to you in a minute. But that she um, was the highest scorer of all time. She took great pleasure in, in beating out Pete Maravich for the score, national uh, scoring champion of all time. So from my perspective, and we've got a... I'm about a million people in my district. There's about 136,000 school kids. Many of them are playing um, sports at the high school level and the middle school level too. Uh, AAU competition uh, and college, as I mentioned. Um, I'm not aware of any transgender kids trying to compete in any of those sports. Uh, I reached out to my school system. They said they didn't know of any. So from my perspective, this is legislation in search of a problem. It's a problem that doesn't exist in my county. I haven't really seen it uh, at our state level in Maryland. I'm not seeing it in the NCAA tournament that starts um, you know, this week uh, and has been going all year, and it's been a great year. By the way, if you, if you stop somebody on the street and say, who's named the top uh, college basketball player this year? I mean, I bet most of them have heard about Caitlin Clark, but would have trouble naming uh, a comparable male basketball player. And I think that's as it should be. By the way, too, we, we've got scenarios where we've got girls at the high school level or middle school level going out for the football team and making it, uh, girls competing in wrestling, going out for the team and making it. I think that's fine. I think we should leave that so that they can do it. But then the last point I want to make, too, is just to reference back to um, the veto message that was delivered by the Republican governor of Utah, Spencer Cox, uh, in reaction to this, right before he vetoed similar kind of legislation uh, in his state. And he said something kind of similar. He's got 75,000 high school kids participating in high school sports, four transgender kids playing high school sports in Utah, one transgender student playing girl sports, 86% of, tra of trans youth reporting suicidality, 56% of trans youth having attempted suicide. So even if you care about women's sports and even if you're trying to protect women, uh, I'm not questioning your, your honesty or your, your position on that, but I do think we should also consider the kids on the other side of this, the kids who are seeing, the transgender kids who are seeing this, this debate, uh, and not just this one, but debates across the country at state level. Um, on TV and, on, and the like. And to them, this is a message of rejection and exclusion. It's, it's hurtful to them. None of my, I've got six kids, none of them are transgender. Um, so I, I don't have any personal experience with this, but you know, I do hope that we can try and be more um, considerate of their concerns and their needs as well. 
Try and balance this out. Uh, you know, if you, you're worried about women's sports, I take it at your word, although I think women's sports is doing better now in the United States than it ever has been. I think it will continue to be so. And with that, I yield back. Gentlemen's time's expired. Gentlelady from Indiana, Ms. Sparks, is recognized for five minutes. I'm going to strike the last word. I actually wanted to, you know, uh, rebut a few points you mentioned, you know, because I actually, mother of two girls who play on the varsity team at high school, and they do practice with my husband playing golf, but it's very different when you practice or actually having a competitive game. And let's just be honest, you say people, you know, you know, there is, you know, no, no uh, organizations that, you know, like organizations that supporting this. I'll be honest with you, I've been in the legislative branch for some time here in the state Senate before, and I will tell you that most of the organizations have a pretty names, and they have a lot of presentations, but a lot of them don't even stand for the people on the ground with this issue. So I actually would take any endorsements of any pretty sounded organization with a grain of salt. I've seen that people that sit on the national farm boards never been on the combine and promote actually some of these policies that are bad for real farmers, small farmers on the ground, not for large monopolies they try to protect. So there are a lot of them, there is the money and, and power protected in D.C. So I usually have a very, I see who fund the organization, what they're about. But, you know, you're talking about girl and women. This is just a common sense and science. You know, biological sex does matter. That matter, I wish it wouldn't. I would be really mean and tough, but I already am without it. As I said, you know, with Second Amendment rights, I'm good with it, okay? But I'll tell you that this is really, you know, disappointing for me that we worry about, and no one is trying to hurt anyone here, but why are we not worrying about hurting opportunities and really discriminating against girls and women? Why we are not worrying about this in this debate? Here's just protecting, you know, biological girls and women and not hurting their opportunities. They work extremely hard. And I'm telling you how well, hard this, a lot of these girls work. Well, the, the opportunities for you. college, the opportunities for advancement, job to win. And I think we should be really honest about that. Well, well the gentlelady. Yeah, you? I will yield it to you, sure. Okay. I, I mean, I'm, I'll stick with basketball because Prince George's County, I'm tracked for that matter, too. Turn out Olympians that would match any other jurisdiction here. Our high school teams are turning out women going to play basketball at the college level across the country, AAU national champions and the like. They're not asking for this. They're doing just fine with the track that they're on. They're getting college scholarships. They're playing in the WNBA. They're not asking for this help because I don't think they feel that they need well, it. Well, we may have different people in your district, in my district, because I have a lot of people in my district that are very upset. A lot of women and school-age girls are upset. They're put in this situation. So I think we need to have an honest conversation about why we would not give girls these opportunities to protect for them, opportunities to compete. Because ultimately, we have to be honest. That is science. If we go back to science, and that is a common sense that we're born biologically different, and that's just a reality. We can spin this reality, we can have a lot of definitions. I can't even keep up with all of these definitions. Well, well, but this is you. a reality that we have. You know, we are different when we are born with different physical capabilities, not all, but we have inherent, you know, genetical, you know, formula when we're born. That is genetics. That is, you cannot well, change that well, in, in as you. much as we want to do that. And I think that's why, the, yeah, I will yield to you. Sure. Name one transgender player who's been drafted by the WNBA. Well, listen, it's not about, you know, who's been drafted or not drafted, okay? Those we have a situation, what I'm just talking, talking to you, we have a situation where we need to really be very clear. Do we want to have biological male play in women's sport? That is goes to this. Do we want to have them allowed to happen or not? Or we should maybe resolve, there are some, I'm sure there are some kids with a lot of mental health issues. And really, there are a lot of issues driven by a lot of different things. There are a lot of, but what, well, what well, here, the, the question at us, do we believe that my logical male should be played on girls' teams or well, women's well, teams. Well, the gentlelady yield. No, please, could you answer? Like, I will yield to you, but do you believe I, I, that my logical male I don't, should be I don't know that? of any who were trying to do. The question I was going to ask you was, yes. at the NCAA level, women's basketball, are there transgender players trying to compete in that league? I, I mean, I just, mm -hmm. there may be, but I just haven't heard about it. And as far as I can tell, there are none in the tournament. Well, we have another ones, right? We have a swimming team and other ones, but it will be, right? That's so the, the question is, the question is, 
do we want to allow that or not? So because it will be more. So if we do not put this legislation, there will be more in a lot of no. different things. But do you believe we put girls at disadvantage? I, I'm just saying this legislation is not needed. I, my high school well, classmate won the gold medal on the 100-meter hurdles in the 1984 Olympics. But we'd have to define Nobody's the trying here. to compete that I know of. You know, well, but I, it I will be. I know the one be. swimmer, but other than that. It will know. be, and that's why we need to be clear. My time, my time is expired.